So how did the hand device work? You'll find out right after this. Hey everybody, I am Taylor and I'm the Stargate Guy, where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. Today, it's how it works. Now we're talking about the ribbon device, or the hand device, or the Karakesh. Depending on what you call it, it's the same thing. The Karakesh, or hand device, is, as far as we know, actually made by the Gould for the Gould, or Goa'uld, if you really want to be technical. This object has a lot of different abilities. It can be used as a tool and a weapon. And starting off with Children of the Gods, we find out that the hand device is capable of scanning a human being to find out if they would be a good match for a Goa'uld symbiote, and render them paralyzed, or stun them, basically. We also found out that the gold hand device is great for torturing people slowly and practically melting their brains, for providing a blast of kinetic energy, being able to throw somebody against a wall, or being able to send telepathic messages. And of course there is that garage door opener on the back of the wrist that allows you to summon the nearest rings or Asgard beaming technology. Now, how does this device actually work? Well, very simply, it uses the gold in order to power it. The ribbon device is made out of silver or gold, depending on the status of the gold who possesses it. This metal not only makes it look awesome and really blingy, but it works as a conductive element in order to power the device itself. More on that later. The hand device itself has little couplings that fit onto the individual fingers and has a crystal in the palm where the energy is produced out of. That crystal focuses the energy in order to use it to however the user wants. Now since this does not have any buttons or anything on it, it is actually used through a neurological link. The owner simply thinks and focuses on what they wish to do, and the hand device will do it. Now, if you note know, at the very back of the ribbon device, where it ends, on your forearm, there is a small bump. And I theorize that that small bump is the neurotransmitter that connects the person's brain and their will to the device itself. And if they have enough energy built up, they can focus their thoughts and use that device. Now, this leads to what actually powers the hand device. Of course, the gold do not carry a bunch of batteries on their back, so what happens there? Now, we do know from Gua'uld physiology that these symbiotes have Naquita in their blood, and that this was not a naturally reoccurring evolution. At least it was not according to the skeletal remains and the current Gould on the Gua'uld home planet. Therefore, along the way, the Gould developed or injected themselves with Naquita. Now we know that Naquita is the same element that the Stargate is made up of, that it is a rather rare element and is not found here on Earth, and that element can hold an extreme amount of energy. In fact, that is how the gate is able to be a giant superconductor, but that's a different episode. Now we do know that the gold need a little bit of energy in order to keep themselves alive. This was found out when Tilk had his symbiote out of his pouch and Dr. Fraser and Samantha Carter were trying to keep it alive in a little stasis tube and they reenacted the elements of his symbiote pouch perfectly except they forgot an electrical impulse that was provided by the Jaffa. That electrical impulse is key to making gold technology work, specifically the hand device. Now we do know that our bodies produce a small amount of electricity, not enough to power, I don't know, the matrix, but that's a subject for a different video. Our bodies do produce a small amount of electricity, and Naquita it conducts that electricity and stores it until it needs to be released. Therefore, it is very plausible that the Gua would power the hand device by simply going about their daily business. The Naquita in their blood slowly builds up enough energy in order to use that hand device in whatever means they want it. This would explain why the Guaud never use the hand device during actual combat, unless it is for defensive measures only. The Guaud only have so much energy, energy that they can use, therefore it would not be prudent to use that energy on kinetic blast after kinetic blast, knocking down an entire army of their enemies. Instead, only use it on a few special victims. This would mean that people who used to have a symbiote in their bodies but no longer do, take Samantha Carter, can use a ribbon device or Guaud technology to an extremely limited amount. They're able to barely power the device, and over time, yes, they can kind of do stuff with it, but not really. 
because the person has a small protein marker left in their system, which means a tiny trace amount of NACWDA, leaving a tiny trace amount of power for the ribbon device to use. Therefore, they would have to concentrate extremely hard in order to use a little bit of energy. The common forms of using the ribbon device is to torture a person, practically melt their brains, and tell you kill them, leaving behind a brain-dead person. But if they're cut off, they have a little burn on their head as indicative of the time that Daniel Jackson almost got killed by his former wife. And on that note, a lesser known ability of the ribbon device is able to form a neural to neural connection between the other person. To be able to read snippets of their mind and to be able to give short impressions or messages, as is the case with Charest and Dr. Daniel Jackson. The Guo'uld ribbon device is a staple to a Guo'uld status, and it can be extremely useful, especially when it comes to defense. The Guo'uld hand device is capable of absorbing energy from outside sources over a small area. This was seen multiple times where people reached out their hand and absorbed a Zatnikatel blast, a staff blast, or able to repel the kinetic energy attack of another hand device, as was the case of how Satesh died. Later on, this technology was adapted into a full body shield. All a person had to do was focus, push a button on the back of their wrist, and presto, they have a force shield that will absorb any Zatnikato blasts, bullets, gold staff blasts, but low projectile things can slip through. So you can pick things up, you can have something thrown to you, but oddly enough, it will repel replicators. Replicators cannot penetrate it, they can only walk on top of it. The Gould Ribbon Device is an overall useful tool for a Gould to have, but it is in no way essential. It is a great for personal defense and a little bit of torture on the weekends. Plus, it is a great way to escape to your nearest hideout. Let me know what you think about the Gould Ribbon Device and your favorite ability that it has in the comment section down below. And let me know what device you would like to have me explain how it works next. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Great Stargate videos are coming out every week where I talk to you about everything and anything Stargate. You can click right here for a great theory having to do with Harlan, or you can click right here for some awesome Stargate content. And until next time, I'll see you on the other side.